Well, to close then, I kind of was, I always like to ask authors, so where are they headed now? So what, you have Bodies in Blue out, and you already mentioned that you and Dombey have kind of an ongoing conversation about <laughs> something, but yeah. what, what is sort of the next project you're envisioning to do? Yeah, no pressure, right? Yeah. Um, I, it can be 20 years in the future. <laughs> Good, because it might be. Um, especially at this rate, um, with it being very difficult to do any any research, right? Tell me. Um, but I have, um, there was initially, um, in the, when I was still in the dissertation phase, there was a sixth chapter um, that was focused on sort of a, a concept that I was conceiving of as social wounds, mm. that there was something happening in the immediate aftermath of the war and maybe carrying through to maybe 1890 or so where there was a lot of concern about veterans coming home and who they were socially or mm -hmm. what they what how they were going to behave when they got home and and um uh, Brian Jordan talks about this in his book on, on veterans, um, this kind of fear that veterans mm -hmm. had been ruined by the war yeah. in sort of, um, in sort of social ways, right? Mm -hmm. That they were dangerous, that they were more violent, that they couldn't reintegrate, that mm -hmm. there was something different about them. And I was really fascinated by that idea. I did find a lot of stuff to, to, just enough stuff to tell me that there was something there. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, that chapter, I ended up, I, it became one of those chapters where you're just like jamming interesting things that you found that don't actually go together at all. But I was like, I have to put this in somewhere. It's Kalania's collection. Exactly. Um, and so I had a, a section on murder where veterans mm. had committed murder, much of it domestic violence related. Um, well, you would I had a question, did they get off as a crime of passion? <laughs> right. I mean, um, there was there was a lot of stories of veterans committing murder, actually, um, particularly killing their wives, which there's something there, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stories of, of suicides that I had in that chapter. Mm -hmm. There was, I, I wrote about tramping, about veterans who mm -hmm. became tramps and rode the rails and you know, um, the panics that people had about the tramp armies kind of taking over the United States and what was that about? And, hmm. um, and, and whether or not there was a crime, a crime wave after the Civil War. And there's kind of a debate, a historiographical debate sure. about whether or not that crime wave actually existed. Um, but anyway, um, that's sort of what I'm looking at right now is what I'd like to look at is, um, veterans and crime after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So were they actually committing crimes? Were they committing crimes in any greater extent than they were before the war, right? I mean, is there actually an increase in crime? Mm -hmm. Or is it more that there's just a belief that there's an increase in crime? And then how do we make sense of that right. when at the same time people are saying, these veterans are the victors of the union. They are the mm -hmm. best men that we have. They are our citizen soldiers. And at the same time saying, actually, they are a bunch of bloodthirsty murderers who are coming to get us, right? Yeah. What, what is that about? How does turn will, villain all of a sudden? Yeah, um, I, I don't have good answers for that yet, yeah. but that's, that's one thing I'm working on. And then I'm working on another, um, another book uh, with... My, the, my producers, my co-producers with the podcast that I work on, um, which is about um, spiritualism in mm -hmm. upstate New York. It's very different. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking, it's a I'm kind of stepping away from my Civil War historian uh, day job um, to look at one particular town in New York State, which is about an hour away from Buffalo called Lilydale, which is a um, intentional religious community created mm. of spiritualists. Um, there, I think you have to be a member in good standing of the spiritualist church and you don't have to be a medium, but many mediums live there. Oh. Um, it was founded in the late 19th century and has continued um, to exist since then. And they open, 
every summer as almost like a tourist attraction for people to come in and get, you know, you know, have their spiritual experiences. Um, yeah, have their spiritual experience, speak to the dead, this kind of thing. Um, and so we're working on a book right now um, about sort of where that comes from and how that fits into the larger story of New York State's religious history and, and specifically in terms of like the Second Great Awakening and the Burned Over right. District and women's uh, women's rights, yeah. um, all kind of being kind of that, that um, atmosphere that's kind of roiling in New York State before the Civil War. How does that influence this, the, the foundation of this town after the Civil War? So, yeah. That sounds fascinating. Thank you. I, I hope that it ends up good. I, we're, we've, we're in the early stages of it, but I'm excited about it.